Hello everyone, I am Tacit and welcome to the Gems of War Campaign 5 Week 7 Day 2. So today, of course, we got the Stone Song Airy Faction. That's the main thing that we got going on. However, we did get all the information on the most recent patch and it was pretty much all the information I kind of already knew. I thought there'd be a little bit more than that, but no, apparently that was pretty much everything. Though it's a pretty beefy thing, <laughs> what it actually is. So, um... Yeah, I'll mention that in a moment. Let me just say hello to everyone. Hello, Interception. Hello, Mr. Hello, Bill. Actually, let me see if there's a thingy on the forum. Um, because there might be some side detail that I didn't notice. But uh, pretty sure it's pretty much just the one main gnome feature. Uh, hello, Bernice. Hello, Tyrion. Hello, Big Four. Uh, hello, Mercy. Hello, Vernus. Welcome, welcome. Uh, hello, uh, NASA. Actually, let me see. Let me go see if I can uh, find one on the forum real quick. I'm pretty sure someone made a little summary thingy. There's not too much to summarize. It's pretty straightforward what next patch is. And it's a pretty beefy one. It's one change, but it's one extremely big good change. And a few other smaller changes. Also, why won't it let me move the uh, thing? There it goes. I guess it can't be in the tab, or otherwise it won't let me move it. <laughs> also, my scroll doesn't work. I need to get a new mouse soon. It's going to get very annoying. Actually, I can still move with arrow keys, can I? Uh, gems of streaming. Someone should have done a summary here. I just need to go all the way to the bottom. Uh, let's see. This isn't going to be an efficient way to get to the bottom, is it? Oh, yeah, that will be. Moving down at the speed of light. Except it's still taking forever to load. <laughs> because it's going through so many thingies. Is there not a button that you could just press to automatically go to the bottom of the thing? I just assume there would be. Also, we might need to restall this page if it could start from the top. Oh, no. <laughs> what even is this? Let's see. Yeah, I'm not sure what the best way of getting all the way down is. Because it doesn't just teleport to the bottom, it keeps getting bigger. I just want a little bit of information! That we kind of already know, but I want to see it in text form. Because I know someone put it down. Press end? What, you mean on the keyboard? This keyboard doesn't have a end button. Because it's a laptop uh, keyboard. Let me see, what does that do? Page down? No, this moves the page down. But yeah, it doesn't have a page end button. Not this keyboard. That is not a feature we have. But if I plug the other keyboard into it, I believe we have that on the other one. <laughs> this keyboard does not have that function. Let's see, print screen, delete home. I'm pretty sure home doesn't do it. Page up, page down just makes it go up and down. Unless it's over top of another button. I don't see it. All right, we reached the bottom. <laughs> now that we've reached the bottom, we now scroll up very slowly. Who did the summary? I know someone would have. Someone somewhere did the summary because it has bug fixes that I'll probably forget to mention. Because uh, they did change Linkathropy to have the thing. There it is. There we go. Lyrian did it. Thank you, Lyrian. So, uh, 5.6 preview stream, blah, blah, blah. So, main feature, obviously. Gnomapalooza! This is something we've uh, pretty much known for a while. Uh, they've been kind of hinting at for quite some time. Exact details haven't really been public until uh, yesterday. However, basically, how this will work is we are getting four new gnomes. I can't remember if they were um, actually 100% confirmed if they're going to be in the Volky drop table immediately. I would assume so. And possibly even in normal drop take key table and they'll forget about it. But um, it should probably be in Volky drop table initially. But basically, four new gnomes. Uh, these four gnomes will each be dropping a part of their song. Uh, and basically, once you have all four of these parts, uh, you will be able to go and combine them into a automatic effect that the second you craft it will take effect for 15 minutes. Uh, this effect makes every single battle you do turn into four gnomes. Yes, four gnomes. <laughs> every single battle. So you can just quick kill explore over and over and over and over and over again. And uh, get some pretty insane loot. Uh, you generally wouldn't want to do this in PvP. Uh, the main reason for this is the durability of the gnomes is going to be based on the actual uh, player and everything. So it is generally going to be best to do this on level 1 explore and just auto kill them with a Rowan or a Dust Devil quick kill. And uh, yeah, get 4 gnomes per battle. Which if you're doing Dust Devil team is six um, is 24 gnomes per minute. <laughs> so if we break that down, what is that? What six? I actually didn't do the math on that yet. What does that come out to? Uh, uh, that's so um, six, uh, four gnomes per battle. 
Six battles per minute. So that's 24 per minute. And then you times that by 15. So that means you could theoretically, with a Dust Devil Iron Hawk team, get 360 gnomes in 15 minutes. That is a lot of gnomes. To put that into perspective, how many gnomes did we get last event? I'm pretty sure the entirety of last gnome event was less than 200 as far as how many I did. I'm pretty sure it was around, yeah, it was probably around the 200 area. That would be 360 in 15 minutes. Also, keep in mind, uh, these might be best to save for vault events. Uh, the reason for this is uh, their vault key drop table of these gnomes are still, you know, the normal vault key drop table. So it is generally going to be best for save these for a vault event. Unfortunately, I will be on vacation next vault event. <laughs> I believe I'm leaving the 4th and the next vault event is on the 6th at Friday. So that is very unfortunate. Why do I keep having to leave on like the most important events? Normally a vault event wouldn't be relevant at all. But this is like the one of the most relevant vault events ever. <laughs> I'll probably still be able to grind it some on my phone. But uh, we won't be able to stream it. Because even if you get these prior to a vault event, you probably just want to save them entirely for a vault event. Because they can be held infinitely. Uh, they're only consumed when you actually use them. So you could just hold them for as long as you want and then um, then use them when it's a vault event. So during a not vault event, you can farm them up. And then when it is a vault event, you can go and just go crazy with them. Uh, one thing to keep in mind, the four gnomes that do drop these pieces of... Oh no, why'd you move? No, go back. I hate when it does this. Uh, da, 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 da. There we go. There's a struggle of not having a scroll button. Okay, anyways, I'll just use the arrow keys. But anyways, um... So it doesn't happen again. But the four gnomes that uh, do drop the four ballads that you need in order to craft it uh, do have a much lower rate of dropping than um, than normal gnomes. Exactly how much lower this is, we don't know. But um, during the stream, they only got two out of like hundreds of gnomes or however many they killed. So it is definitely quite a bit lower. Uh, however, they are in all locations where gnomes normally would be, as well as when the gnome uh, of Palooza is occurring. Uh, every location where they uh, would normally occur will have four of them. Though, of course, the most efficient way is still to do it in Explorer, as it always has been. But, um, yeah, this it gives a lot of gnomes. And even though, theoretically, this would allow you to have um, pretty much vault event numbers, or even crazier than that, during a non-vault event, you do want to save these entirely for a vault event, as um, the extra vault key higher chance should still affect it during that. So if you want a billion vault keys... Just save a bunch of Noma Paloozas for a Vault event, and then it'll go absolutely crazy <laughs> with uh, the kind of, kind of value you can end up getting. But um, yeah, it, it should be pretty insane. Really looking forward to see how that pans out. But uh, basically, a lot of loot. That's just pure increase. They didn't actually bring back anything or, you know, bring down any kind of resource gains. This is all just pure new loot. Uh, one thing to keep in mind, they do have to be all four of them, so they have to be unique. Uh, it is possible that you get, like, four of one, four of another, and then zero of the other two. And then you can't end up making the uh, Noma Paloozas because you end up needing the, um, the additional ones or, you know, the other ones that you don't have. Uh, also, they do stack uh, infinitely. So you can use as many Noma Paloozas that you have the resources for, save them until a, a vault event, and then have like a straight hour, two hours of just um, grinding gnomes like crazy. So pretty cool. Uh, aside from that, miscellaneous stuff. Uh, new heroic gems will be added, blah, blah, blah in the future. Uh, two new warbands. So this one's pretty relevant. The Armored Legion and Entangled Woods, the first and fourth ones, will no longer be available uh, for quite some time. So it is a good idea if you have any amount of spare um, war coins to end up getting Armored Legion and Entangled Woods because they will be gone for an indefinite amount of time. They will be coming back at some point, but uh, they will be replaced with two new war bands. So if you didn't already get the Armored Legion or Entangled Woods, it would be a good time to consider doing so. Or hope you get pure RNG off of the next uh, several days. Uh, we still have a week or two before the patch. They have confirmed 100% that's not happening this week. However, uh, Armored Legion and Entangled Woods will be gone for a unknown amount of time after, um, after the patch occurs. So do be very mindful of that, as uh, it could be months or even a year. Who knows? You, you know, <laughs> when they say it's coming back eventually, that could mean any amount of time, so... Um, I would highly advise getting both Armored Legion and Entangle Woods uh, within soon, <laughs> very soon, <laughs> because once the patch happens, uh, it'll be gone for who knows how long. Uh, Lankotherapy changes, so they added a new visual and sound to it, so it's uh, more identifiable when it occurs. It will now half the level correctly, which is nice, um, so whenever a uh, beast gets um, transformed from it, it will become, let's say it's a level 20, it will then become a level 10. If you're doing like a max level delve, it will go from a 500 to a 250 when you're fighting an enemy. So Lankanthropia will actually be a little bit uh, better at that point. 
and it kind of just made some changes to make it a little bit more obvious when it uh, occurs. Uh, aside from that, I believe that was pretty much everything. Uh, there's some other miscellaneous stuff. Um, oh yeah, Val Ravens will now um, give the sigils when they're transformed by Lincothropy, so that bug with that has been fixed. Another Lincothropy issue on the many billions of Lincothropy issues. Most of the issues with it, aside from the fact that it's ultra annoying, has been pretty much fixed next patch. Uh, da -da -da. Bunch of visual glitches. Oh, I wonder if they finally fixed that one glitch. <laughs> Uh, first time. Oh, yeah, they're redoing the first time gem purchase. So if you've redone the first time gem purchase since they added a first time gem purchase, you can do the first time gem purchase bonus again. So they're mostly just trying to get people to spend money on gems. Uh, let's see, which is generally not worth it even with that bonus. Uh, even with a sale and with that bonus, I did not find it worth it. Uh, da -da -da. Yeah, I think that was the last relevant thing. Oh yeah, I asked that question. We got no comment on if um, Tower of Doom will be more often than once every 11 weeks. I did ask. <laughs> I tried to get info on them. But uh, nope, we don't really have any uh, info on what on earth is happening with all those colored scrolls. And of course it's not this week. Which was specifically mentioned multiple times. Um, but yeah, pretty sure that's everything. So basically no Mapalooza, which is <laughs> the main thing I was mentioning. But yeah, it's basically just Nomapalooza and making Lincothropy less annoying. Those are the main two changes. Oh, and two new warbands, which uh, means two new uh, slots. So uh, we'll have uh, additional two to go with our army. Actually, I haven't even started using this one yet. This one was from VIP, though, not from uh, some other means. And we do have the war coins for it. Um, you would want to definitely make sure you do Armored Legion and, and Tangled Woods before the patch if you can. Um, and if you have 100 reserve, it'll be pretty nice because you'll be able to buy both of the other two warbands immediately. So we have a pretty nice number right now. So when the two new warbands uh, replace um, Armored Legion and Tangled Woods, we already have the 100 we need to go buy it immediately. So that's pretty convenient. And of course, if you don't have all of them, you can end up getting them off of pure RNG off of uh, offers, which is why I like clearing my offers. Oh, we have Magic Deeds today. But they can appear uh, on any of these three. You can also get them from Arena, the smaller one. The bigger one sometimes on the VIP offer as well. There's two different ones. The smaller one that can appear on the first two, as well as an arena. And the bigger one that's only on VIP. Both are extremely luck-based on getting. Anyways, uh, let's go clear out some dailies. Probably mess with... Uh, we'll definitely do the faction. And maybe we'll mess with World Event a little bit. Because I haven't even started the World Event yet. So we should probably get on that. Do I even need to change anything with this team? I think it's fine. All the glory. I know. Can you imagine how much glory that will be per 15 minutes? Because getting an hour's worth of those things is going to be near impossible. Like, generally, between one vault event to the next vault event, I'd be very surprised if you get more than 30 minutes worth of them. However, keep in mind, during a Nomapalooza, you can still get the gnomes that drop the Nomapalooza scrolls. Or the ballads, whatever they're called. The four little musical sheets that end up making the ballad. But um, you can get them during a Nomapalooza. Unlike a pet gnome that doesn't have any gnomes in it, um, you are still allowed to get um, the Nomapalooza scrolls during a Nomapalooza. So during that 15 minutes that you're power grinding, it is theoretically possible with extremely high luck that you then get another 15 minutes, and then another, and then another. <laughs> so basically, you could kind of snowball like crazy after the very first Nomapalooza. Though this issue will be trying to get the initial one. Also, based on how many they got during their 15 minutes, there's a good chance you will not actually be able to get all four Noma Palooza scrolls during the 15 minute period, even using the most efficient team in the game, which is six wins per minute. Though you might get pretty close. Because I think their first 15 minutes they got two, and then I don't think they got a single one the rest of the time, though they weren't really like efficiently farming in any way. <laughs> I think they was taking them like a minute per battle or something. But they got really lucky multiple... Oh, uh, we also got confirmation. Uh, two or more of them can appear in the same match. The chance of that happening is very unlikely, but they did get a match that had two of them in the same battle. Which means it can definitely occur. It's not likely to occur. Because I believe those were the only two that even happened the entire stream. But it is possible for two, three, or even four, if you got like ultra, ultra lucky, to appear in the same battle. We have not gotten confirmation that the same one can occur in the same battle, though. Because both the two that appeared were different ones, which is obviously beneficial. You ideally want to be seeing different ones because you need one of each for it to craft. Also, you craft in the Soul Forge. However, it doesn't actually cost any resources. 
Uh, the only thing that it costs to make the Palooza scroll is the four ballads that you get from the four gnomes. Uh, one per gnome, of course, with their own unique one. It does not actually cost souls, gems, diamonds, or any other resource to craft them. Which I'm actually kind of surprised that it doesn't. But all you have to do is just find the scrolls and you're good to go. Also, one other thing that they did with the uh, Noma Palooza scrolls. Um, you only need Soul Forge 1. So even if you're a brand new player and somehow got four of them before actually getting uh, so, uh, getting the Soul Forge to level 10. If that was to somehow happen, you would be able to craft a Noma Palooza. So not having Soul Forge upgraded to level 10 uh, would not hinder you from doing Noma Palooza. I'm pretty sure that is almost completely irrelevant for most people. <laughs> but uh, at least for super new players, uh, that would allow them to partic participate in the Noma Palooza. Though there's a very good chance you would have the uh, Soul Forge Max way before you find four Noma Palooza scrolls. Oh, you never know. And for that reason, they did put it all the way at level one when you initially get Soul Forge. But if anyone knows the the questions, do let me know. Uh, next patch, probably two Tuesdays from now. Not next week, but the following week. That hasn't been confirmed, but that is the most likely time that the next patch will drop. It's definitely not this week that they confirmed. But two or Tuesdays from now seems like the exact time they'll do it. Though there's a small chance next Tuesday, or you know, one week from today, could be a patch. The two from now is more likely. Anyway, so, world event. I mean, not world event. Um, uh, faction event. We got Stone... St not that. Uh, we have Stone Song Airy, as far as the location. As far as the teams, you can end up running Finesse with Nimbus Bow. Nimbus Bow is in Soul Forge, so definitely make sure to pick it up this week. However, uh, we will be running with the Rowane that looks like a knight. So uh, we'll just be running this. It just one-shots everything like Rowane, and we're good to go. And we have Phylactery because free souls. Why not? Uh, that is pretty much the game plan. I will switch to armor, however. Wait, it's not Guild Wars anymore. We don't need those cleanse metals. And we'll switch to pure armor. That is not pure armor. If I can stop misclicking, there we go. And now we should be good to go. All right, let's go into the games. Go to events. Should have the team on copy paste. And we're good to go. All right, now we'll just run this the entire time. Uh, before we do, though, I do want uh, enchant, please. Thank you. Because that gives us a guarantee second turn harpy mage. Oh, I forgot. We have to repaste the team now, don't we? Because we went out of the menu. hate that so much. It doesn't save your team until you actually confirm it into the first battle. At least for that screen, anyways. Most other screens in the game aren't like that, but it is specifically for factions. If you don't actually start a battle, it will not save the team that you put in there. Which is a little annoying. Ah, uh, yes. Offers are better than... Buying gems in the game. That is correct. I'm still not sure why they haven't buffed the gem buying rate in the game. But um, it is better just to buy literally every flash offer that ever exists than to ever buy $100 worth of gems in this game. Which is kind of weird that the game is set up like that. But it is the way the game is currently set up. And for whatever reason, uh, Puzzle Quest 3 seems to be set up the same way. At least currently, where there's not much of an incentive to buy the premium currency, but there is incentive to buy, like, the monthly thingy. In that case, it's something different, but in Gems of War, of course, it's the Battle Pass. Yeah, I'm not sure why they don't like people buying their premium currencies, but uh, they kind of discourage it by making it such bad value. <laughs> in every game they ever make. Which is a very weird strategy. Because they always make some other purchase in the game better than buying the actual premium currency. Which kind of defeats the point of buying the premium currency directly. Uh, let's see, I'll take that over. Don't you hit the thing I need to win. Wait, was there one? Oh, it does a random color, I forgot. And it chose the one color that literally only had one gem on the board. Good job. Wonderful. What's that, Lelestat? Welcome. When it comes to offers, you have one right now uh, for a troop uh, off of upgrading it to Mythic. If you get that and make it Mythic without uh, buying the offer, do you know if the offer will change? No. Uh, the offer stays the same. I 
And most of the trip upgrade offers aren't really worth it. The only one that is maybe worth it, if you're very impatient, though it is still pretty pricey, is whenever you get a mythic, or a new mythic, or I think it's just any mythic, or, you know, any mythic that you didn't already own. I believe it gives you an offer for 35 bucks that has a Nisha token in it. I mean, a Nisha metal in it, which is basically nine Nisha tokens. Ever since they added that to that offer, it's not as horrible. I personally have never gotten it, though. And it's still pretty pricey. Because if you break that down to how much you'll need. Let's say you get the three Anus naturally. If you do the five Nishas at 35 each, that's, what, 165 bucks or something? That's pretty pricey to max one Mythic. Like, really pricey. <laughs> like, ridiculously pricey. So if you break it down like that, it makes it seem a lot not worth it. Like many microtransactions in this game. I don't think they understand the micro part of microtransactions. That I don't think they have fully grasped. And comparing it to other free-to-play games, it just reminds me like how awful <laughs> most of the microtransactions are in this game. Because I've been researching Pokemon Unite now that's coming out in like a week or two. Definitely sometimes this month. And their microtransactions, some of them are as like low as like 10 cents. Which is kind of funny because the company is 10 cent that made it. <laughs> like some of the microtransactions are like legitimately like 10 to 50 cents. Or something that's like really good. Like a week long buff to like um, something is like only 40 cents. Uh, what do we go for? We'll go for that. For a resource accumulation rate. Not for, um, <laughs> not for something else. Not for like a pay to win buff. Uh, let's see. What do we take here? Grab the foil. Yeah, Initia Metal is pretty huge. The first two have the biggest effect. Because uh, the first two allow you to set 20% mana start into two Nisha, which is very impactful. The next five are a little bit less effective because the next five just gives you one mythic upgrade to max at 100% chance by using three Anus and two Nishas and three Nishas. But yeah, your first two to three Nishas are the most impactful. The first two so you can set 20% into eight magic and the third so you can set 12 magic. And then everything from there you just scrap into mythics in order to um, get them upgraded. Since one, two, and three Nishas allow 100% chance to upgrade a mythic. Though, of course, those upgrades do very, very little. They do as much to a mythic as they do to a common, if it's the same type. It just costs a lot more to do it to mythics. So far, the only mythic I've even maxed is Phoenicia. Literally the only one. And it's because she gains 12 additional damage from it. Which is 48 total damage to the opposing team. Just by having it, her meddled. Which is obviously very strong relative to where she's normally used. Which is for quick killing various uh, objectives. Where something like 12 damage to everything is quite substantial. Oh, so hello, Bushka. Hello, Jamie. Hello, Jack. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Oh, I'll take that over. Let's get those free souls. Black Terry is obviously not the best weapon to be doing there, but uh, free souls are free souls. I think we normally get like 12. We're getting 122 per battle every single time we do it. I think that's worth it. It's basically 100 free souls. A little over 100 every single time we cast Black Terry. Which is going to be pretty much every match. I barely even waste any time at all. And it creates a Doom Skull, which will do absolutely nothing. I thought that Barbara if I didn't already say hi. Welcome, welcome. Uh, let's see. Anything else I missed in chats? Uh, let's see. I already answered that one. You're at 480 out of 500 for Pure Faction? Nice. Yeah, Pure Faction here is pretty easy. You just run Harpy Mage, just triple Zachi, and you pretty much just auto win. Mostly because you can just keep spamming the full AoE and just wipe out everything. 
Uh, the one thing you do want to avoid, if you go down the middle route and take out the tier 5, which uh, generally you wouldn't do because you have the tier 4 offers, but uh, make sure if you do go down this route that it's not the submerge. You do not want to give the enemy submerge. But normally you're going to be taking the tier 4 path or the double tier 2 path anyway, so that's not really too relevant most of the time. But if you are going to go down that path, make sure it's not the submerge one. Otherwise, that would be very bad for the final battle. It's like the only thing that would make the final battle annoying. It, the final battle does have a bit of resummon, though. But it's more in your favor than the enemy's favor. Every faction that has resummon is more in the player's favor. Due to how resummoning works on AI. They come in a lot weaker. Also, you're generally killing all of them simultaneously anyways due to the Zachis. The army of Zachi. If you don't have Lord of Slaughter, what troop would you use for the world event? Um, you have a couple different skull spams. You have Shegra, you have um, that one brown red from that one faction, I forget his name. Um, you have... I'm trying to think what else. There's not too many. <laughs> you have that one in power that converts all yellows to skulls. It's probably one of the cheapest ones, if not the cheapest one. I'm pretty sure I mentioned on the cheap team. But it's definitely one of the more annoying weeks. But you'd basically just replace it with a different skull spammer. Would a rock worm and a brown book... Uh, would the hero be a bookworm? Ha 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 ha, that's funny. But I wouldn't really advise using those together. You don't have guard or finesse. Oh, and finesse is slow. Uh, should you stick with uh, hiking iron gut? Yes, for the later battles, just use a hiking iron gut team. That'd be perfectly fine. I think we even had one there before I ended up replacing it, if I'm not mistaken. From when we were doing the higher level delves when we initially did it. For the lower levels, it wouldn't really be too good. But if you're doing like 200 plus or even 150 plus, um, it'd be perfectly fine just to run a standard Iron Gut team. Something like Mountain Crusher, Iron Gut, uh, Harpy Mage, and one other thing that has a way to get rid of uh, immune. A cursed effigy. Actually, that doesn't have um, the color in it. Oh, it would. I know that one Mythic does. I'm trying to think of something cheaper that does. It has to be something underneath brown that has curse. Oh, yeah, uh, Obsidious as well. I mean, not Obsidious. Um, no, Enrage Carinder. Or in current normal Carinder. It doesn't. That's green, red, um, purple, isn't it? I'm trying to think what else has curse under brown other than that one really good Mythic. Or not really good Mythic, but it's good for uh, brown cursing. Hey, Cedric. Hello, Anthony. Any team suggestion for less than 500? Iron Gut. Iron Gut or Finesse. Finesse would be the cheapest thing. Iron Gut would be the most expensive. That's something that quite a few people have laying around just because it's such a good delve troop. It's either triple Finesse into... Um, into Nimbus Bow, which is in Soul Forge this week, or you could do the uh, Iron Gut builds. Those are the main two that would get this faction done for a really high level. Yeah, Vashtagan was his name. I couldn't think of his name. That's a mythic, though. But he's really good at brown cursing when you have a really heavy brown team, which normally Iron Gut teams are, because it normally uses Mountain Crusher or something similar. And when you're in a brown yellow restriction, you can also do Harpy Mage as your man accumulator, which does Brown Storm as well. You always keep forgetting Vashtagon's name. He's an off-meta troop that is useful very situationally. Mostly with Iron Gut. It's not a bad uh, mythic, though. It's just very situational, even more situational than Obsidious and uh, Karandera. It's a very situational utility troop.
Also, one thing the most recent stream didn't do. Uh, we did not get any spoilers to what the power gem is next season. I'm pretty sure the patch itself will give us spoilers, though, because we'll be able to see forward in the files. So that will kind of give it away to some capacity. However, uh, we do not currently actually know what the next power gem will be. Also, there is a small chance next patch achievements might spoil it as well. Also, next patch is definitely coming before next season. So that's kind of a given. <laughs> because next season is like, what, three, a little over three weeks away? It's most likely two Tuesdays from now. And definitely has to be within three Tuesdays because uh, they kind of have to do it before uh, next season starts. But they could theoretically do it in the downtime week when we have Tower of Doom. Oh, I doubt it. It'll likely be before the season ends. Oh, why'd I do that? We already had it. Well, I guess it's for, for Black Terry. We got some value out of it, if nothing else. 100 souls. It's not a lot of souls, but doing every battle adds up. It's hello, Andre. Welcome. Wait, do we actually already know what they are? Mana potions? Match them and create 7 to 14 of their color. What? That doesn't sound balanced. That doesn't sound balanced at all. I'm pretty sure that's being changed before it gets added. 7 to 14 of its color. That's a very, very high amount. Especially if it's 10 or more. Though you, uh, oh yeah, you do have some control over what it is, too. Because if it, the power gem is specifically colored in that color, you would know what it's creating. If it was completely random, it'd be a bit more balanced, though. Because then it's basically just a coital. But as a power gem on the board. Because the thing that makes that not broken is um, the fact that it's random. And that's what actually makes it underpowered. But if you know exactly what color it's going to be before you match it, that will make it a lot stronger. Especially if you have a troop that can actually control the color on the board. Actually, one thing that might actually gain a really big benefit from it, it's um, Quetzalma. Whatever that one yellow bird thingy is that creates a bunch of yellow and removes um, something of choice. I feel like that would have a lot of control over it. There's quite a few other troops too. Oh, the files already got updated with it? I thought it would happen next patch. I didn't realize they uh, already got updated. Interesting. It seems like it's going to be pretty broken, though. Like, if troops end up creating a bunch of them, it's just going to gem spawn like crazy. Like, even creating two of them on a board is going to be insane. Though there's a chance the enemy would be able to use them if it literally only did that and no other follow-up. If we ever get an extra turn version of it, that would be very broken. I kind of want to see it. Give it to, like, a goblin. <laughs> a goblin just puts, like, five potion gems on the board. Just because um, we need goblins to be re-re-re-re-re-meta again. That'd be the easiest way. Just give them an extra turn potion creation. <laughs> And then you just get a billion gem spot. That sounds like it'd be very broken. Let me see. Are anything coming up going to be a goblin next season? I kind of want to see. Uh, create a brown mana potion when I take skull damage. Create a blue one when I take skull damage. What's the ability? Uh, create two skulls. Boosted by brown allies. Nothing good. Create and... Uh, or curse and freeze an enemy. And then deal magic plus blah blah. You don't actually do potions though. Where's the other one? Uh, convert all green gems to purple potions. Well then. That's balanced. 
Uh, and all brown gems to skulls. What on earth is this troop? Oh, it's a mythic. No wonder. Does it use purple? No, it does not use purple. Okay. I was going to say, if it did that and used purple... <laughs> Okay, what uses purple that feeds blue, red, or yellow? It's a construct fey. Also, we still don't have 50% construct. Or 50% fey. A stone skin. Bless a random ally when matching purple gems. So basically, instantly barrier your entire team. Or sorry, instantly bless your entire team. Because it creates purple potions. That's rather interesting. What purple creates a infinite blue red or yellow and not the rogue spider because it wouldn't work because it's not a rogue hmm has to be some kind of purple that does like near infinite mana vespera kind of but not exactly consistent definitely we'll need to look into it that mythic seems very broken it's coming to first mythic in october it's still three months from now Seems very broken. Might be the strongest mythic uh, this year. You basically get infinite purple mana and an instant four times bless to your team. Which is also a four times cleanse. Indirectly. Wait, is that the campaign mythic? How's the campaign mythic? Is that exactly... Let me see. Math. What is... Three, four... Fourteen. Is that fourteen um, weeks from now? One, two, three, four... Five, six, seven, eight... Nine... Oh, that's September. Oh, yeah, that, that's probably the campaign mythic. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. What number did I just say? Yep, that's probably the campaign mythic then. 13 weeks from now. That sounds about correct. But yeah, that's probably the campaign mythic. I would also explain why it already has a date. Because it is the campaign mythic. It might be the strongest campaign mythic we've gotten so far this year. Oh, it's also scheduled to release on Monday. Oh, yeah, it definitely has to be a campaign mythic then, doesn't it? Because that's the only type of mythic that ever releases on a Monday. And that would make sense because I said 14 weeks and 13 weeks from now is when you get it from the bigger pass. And that website shows it when you're available to get it for a bigger pass. Because that's when it's first available. So, yep, 13 weeks is exactly how far. Because I was like, wait, didn't I say 14 weeks the initial time? But I forgot. It um, it does it a week earlier because it tracks when the bigger pass can get it, not when the smaller pass gets it on the uh, Terrans World website. Because it does it when it's first available. And, of course, the bigger pass gets it a week early. Speaking of, new mythic in two weeks because of that. We get the useless, um, the, uh, the moon, um, next week. And then the following week we get, um, new mythic. Though the, uh, season mythic this time around was, um, I don't know. It, it's a weird converter. The most annoying thing about it is that it's Lincanthropy related. It does have potential to not be horrible, though. But is the most expensive double converter in the entire game until the next season double converter comes in. The next season double converter is going to be absolutely insane. But, um... It's not a horrible ability. It's, uh, convert all green to Lankanthropy gems. And then all yellow to, uh, Doom Skulls. So basically, you get your normal amount of purple mana accumulation while also four times Lankanthroping the entire enemy team. It also is immune to Lankanthropy because of Impervious, so you don't have to worry about at least it being hit by it, if nothing else. And it does um, the Yellow to Doom Skull, which is pretty noteworthy that it's doing Doom Skull and not Normal Skulls. Because that will explode the Lankanthropies that are around it. So with its ability itself, it's basically going to, uh, assuming you have alignment, it will get you a bunch of purple mana, 
It'll skull spam for a lot of damage, and it will burst those Lincanthropy gems with um, with the Doom Skull. So you'll pretty much guarantee four times Lincanthropy the imposing team. And then summons either a Winter Wolf or a Warg. The Winter Wolf being really good, the Warg being pretty underwhelming. And has Impervious, which is always good. And that's basically it. <laughs> because this final trait's actually really bad. Gives one attack and magic to all beasts at the beginning of its turn. Very bad final perk, but it has Impervious to make up for it. Yeah, all of its value is pretty much in this ability. Also, did they increase the mana cost? I could have sworn this was like 22 mana cost earlier. It's 23 now. But it'll be the most expensive double convert until next season. Anyways, uh, where were we? Let's keep finishing out this event. Then we'll hand out a code, and then we'll probably mess with the world event just a little bit. Uh, what trip are you referring to? I'm pretty sure uh, the second troop is, um, well, what rarity is it will kind of determine where it is. If it's a legend, it's an event keys. If it's an epic, it could just be a world lore event uh, troop. What else would it come from? Yeah, you're right. There are two. It is the same day, right? Yeah, it is. I assume you would get it from the world lore event. Try to think, what else? Where else would you get it from? It wouldn't be an event keys because it's not a legends. It's not that boss like troop or anything. It would pretty much have to be from the events, or you know, from the event as in um, from the um, from the uh, buying of tears in the event. No, it's not a vault troop. It's not a gnome or anything. Also, it would have the vault uh, tag on it if it did, which I don't believe it did. No, it's from McGrim Woods. So it's probably just from the world event then. We have, I believe, one or two other times gotten a trip from the world event. It's very rare. We also occasionally get a weapon from the world event, which is also pretty rare, but it does happen. It's not unprecedented. It just very rarely occurs. Also, oh, McGrim Woods is going to be like 23 star, I believe, by that point. 22, 23, something like that. Between everything that's getting. It's going to just shoot up in stars. I think it's 19 right now. One short of a buff. And then just going to shoot straight to like 23 or so. Pretty sure it's at 19 right now, isn't it? Yeah, 19. Wait, does it? Does it go all the way to 25? Wow. Oh, because the mythic and the other thing, too. I still feel like we're only getting one boss troop at the end of this season. But yeah, the files do so much to just two. I can't really see us getting two boss troops. And if they do, they better be half priced. <laughs> Like, that I wouldn't mind. Like, two boss troops, but they both cost four um, power orbs. That's basically just getting double the content for the same cost. One requiring the sun, the other requiring the moon or something. Maybe both also requiring owning the current mythic at the end of the season. Also, I believe the patch would definitely have to be before then. Because I don't think Terran's Road really properly mentions the data for them. But once we get the patch, it will. So it might be the first thing we have to check after the patch. Because we might get info on what on earth the Doom Troops do definitively by then. And if we're actually getting one or two boss troops or what's up with that. Because I don't think it's currently clear what on earth is happening other than that we're pretty much guaranteed getting at least one boss troop at the end of the season. I 
I say when I check both rooms and they're the same thing. <laughs> Not literally the same thing, but you know, same multiplier. I generally don't worry about multiplier order too much these days. Yes, uh, there is some incentive to do Nomapalooza to get pet gnomes in PvP. However, you'd be wasting a lot of potential if you were to do it. But if you wanted to do like a couple battles and just do it until you get a pet, it could be okay. But you definitely wouldn't want to keep doing it afterwards. But even then, you're still wasting a lot of potential because a PvP battle generally takes about uh, 20 to 30 seconds against gnomes there. Whereas you can do it in 10 seconds if you just do Dust Devil against uh, Explore. So you're losing a lot of gnome potential by doing it in um, PvP. Though it would yield your entire guild a gnome, or a pet I mean. So basically it's like a pet bait that then goes into gnome farming. It's basically like an alternative pet bait by a different name. And then you do the rest of the time to gnome farm. Which is kind of okay. I'd personally just do it all in uh, all 15 minutes in uh, Explore, though. How many gems does it take to get uh, to level 500 faction? On a Tuesday, it would normally take around... Well, it depends if you're rushing or not. Um, if you're just going for the absolute lowest and doing literally every single room, it should cost you about 2,110. If you're skipping literally every single room, it take, should take about 3,110. And if you skip to about 200, it should take about 2,510. So you're looking at about 2,000 to 3,000. 2,000 or so, or 2,110 if you do everything. And 3,110 or 2,910 if you uh, skip everything. And somewhere in between if you do a mix of both. It really depends what method you're going for. When I do weekend one, I normally do the 2,510 method. Which is pretty much do all the rooms up to 200 and start skipping all of them. Which is kind of a mix of both to just save a little bit of gems. Yeah, it, you're pretty much just um, paying for either 4 hours, 6 hours, or 8 hours to get the event done, essentially. Approximately. Some factions are slower or quicker than others. It also depends on what you have and team builds and stuff. But yeah, generally speaking, it's about a two hour difference between each set. And a 400 gem difference between each set. With the longest time saving you about 800 gems. Though it also takes twice as long compared to spending the, uh, just a thousand gems more. Also, spending more makes pure faction easier. But this pure faction is pretty easy, so it's not as relevant. But for harder pure factions, that a fa factor is more relevant. Yeah, right, final one. Then we'll go hand out code, and then we'll mess with the world lore, world world lore event for the rest of the time. I'm probably gonna build an AOE team for it, since we were at the earlier battles. And then tomorrow we'll play it more for real. <laughs> with an actual team. The skull spam. These are very early battles, obviously. Even when you have a uh, skull increase and not spell increase, it's still better just to kill them with um with uh, spells. First battle with High King Iron Gut. He got hit with Lingotherapy. And now it's going to take forever. Oh gosh, that, that's very unfortunate. That can happen. Is this what level 1600 looks like? Um, well, we have extra stats right now because we're doing a faction. But... Um, Yes, getting really late in the game, you do tend to have a lot of stats. Though not this many stats. Our stats are artificially high because we're doing a faction right now. Because we get additional while we're doing factions based on the bonuses from this faction. Our stats are normally like half this. Well, maybe not half, but uh, less than what we have now. And when we switch over to the uh, ward event, you'll be able to see the actual amount of stats we have. 
Right now they're higher than what they would normally be. Yeah, Slankathropy gems are theoretically really good at taking out meta teams. They're really good against teams that need a really specific set of troops to work. Like, teams with low flexibility that basically need everything on the team are very heavily affected by uh, Link Therapy. As well as teams centered around one really big troop. Like, even this team would be affected quite heavily by the fact that it's basically a Guards Avatar team that depends entirely on Guards Avatar to function at all. Also, the only time Guard's Avatar is meta. <laughs> because normally uh, Rowan and other stuff is just better than it. But this specific color restriction, a few others where you can't use Rowan but you can use this, he's actually meta. Which is mostly just for doing Tuesday factions. Also, isn't he still the only White Helm Mythic? No, I think he got a second one recently. Didn't we get um, that one buff HP troop from it, I think? So he's not the only Mythic there anymore. He was for the longest time, but as of a couple months ago, he wasn't the uh, exclusive mythic there anymore. I keep forgetting the name of that troop. Archdiva. Archdiva, I'm pretty sure, is from Whitehome. But for the longest time, um, that place did not have a uh, another mythic. Because Archdiva came uh, earlier this year. I think it came in February or something. Somewhere around there. They almost forgot about that earlier this year. Archdiva is pretty good. As more and more really good mythics come into the game with really high mana costs, it's going to become increasingly better. Especially these new two new double converts, or even multiple double converts if we get those boss troops that have decent ones. Um, those double convert mythics and doom troops could have a lot of potential. I was one month off. It was uh, March, not February. It's only been for four months that way. But yeah, for the longest time, Wayhelm only had one. But for four months, it does have two. Has Archdiva ever been available again? I don't think it has yet. If it hasn't happened to Soulforge Cycle, um, the first time he's ever available in Soulforge should be coming soon. Has he already happened to Cycle? I don't think he has. I don't recall mentioning it on the Monday video. That doesn't mean it didn't happen. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, Archdiva is very situational. I feel like Lord of Slaughter is its main gimmick currently. But, uh, yes, Archdiva's not bad. I wouldn't say it's the absolute best in the game for stuff. But it does have some very niche purposes. Like making Lord of Slaughter ridiculous. Not that he already isn't. <laughs> not that it already needs that even more. Like, every buff it does is, like, perfect for it. Oh, it was three weeks ago and so forth. Okay, it did rotate around. I think I mentioned it when it happens. I just forgot it did happen. But yeah, he came in through the new rotation. Pretty early in a new rotation, too. Like, one of the earliest spots he could have, if it was three weeks ago. Because I think the rotation set, like, what, five, six weeks ago or so? Or seven? It's pretty early, given that it goes for, like, months now. Anyways, we finished the entirety of the faction, right? Yep, every single reward. Okay, I said I would hand out a code then, so let's go do a code. And then we'll do a couple rounds of the uh, Ward Lore event. Probably just with a quick kill AoE team. And then play it seriously tomorrow night. Since the only other thing we have is the pet battle thingy. I am looking for the codes. Not the code section, but specifically the codes. Where are you hiding? Well, so we still have a pretty hefty amount. But I probably should ask for more before we go on break again. Because it normally takes them a little while before they... Um, before they uh, do anything. <laughs> Especially with some big patches around the corner. One moment, guys. I got you guys the code. Let me go put it over here. Put it over there. Put it over there. Make sure it works. It does indeed work. Put it over here. Get the link. And good to go. 
But there you guys go. There's a redeem code used on gemsware.com in the game code section. Your invite code can be found in your settings menu. Whatever game says right over here is what we put in for your invite code. Redeem code's right over there in chat. It's a copy and paste of random numbers and letters to the YL. And gives the same other reward as always. 5,000 gold, 25 gems, and 500 souls. And definitely feel free to leave a uh, like on the stream. It's up helping out a lot and is greatly appreciated. And of course, only usable on PC mobile version of the game. But there you guys go. Enjoy. Oh, that reminds me. Today's Wednesday, isn't it? Oh, no. Today's Tuesday. My days are off. I was going to say the Puzzle Quest streams tonight. It's like, no, that's tomorrow. They did do a small patch for Puzzle Quest 3. And by small, I mean really small. I think they just did some stuff to reduce lag. It was just some optimization. <laughs> it was a very small, like, uh, server-side mini patch. Mostly to make less lag. Which is good. Oh, yeah, I never replaced the new metals here, did I? Yay! Broken metals! I wonder if that's fixed next patch. I kind of hope it's not. It's always funny to see. What kind of weird monstrosity it makes out of the uh, thing. This time we got like some kind of blue border around a uh, thing and a bunch of other fragments around it. Well, it always does something similar to that, but it does seem to be slightly different. And then all we have to do is do it again and it fixes itself. That's such a weird glitch. Anyways, uh, let me go claim my rewards for the reward event. Which might already be done. No, never mind. Uh, let's see... Yep, there she is. Top 20. Yeah, we already bought the thing. However, I did not claim our rewards up to this point. Until now. Oh, that's a pretty cool portrait. Wait, whose ability is this? Does anyone recall what ability this is from? Oh, I know who it's from. It's from the new troop. That's why I don't know who it's from. It's from the new troop that came out this week, isn't it? That would make sense. Pretty sure it is. Let me double check. That's not where you check that. Yep, okay, that's what it's from. Okay, now I know. That is where it's from. All of our extra skull damage. Actually, I don't want skull damage yet, do I? It's actually better to run uh, magic here for these initial levels. Uh, I'm looking for... Oh, yeah, it's just rarity order this time around. Though you do want to do the same battles, so we're going to stick with Harpy Mage. I do want an AoE team. I already have this saved. We do have Enchant, so we can go Harpy Mage for that quick mana. I also can go Angry Mob. Angry Mob, Harpy Mage. Hero running, like, uh, Dawnbringer or something. Because we can't run Dustbringer because of the red restriction. It is red restriction, right? Yeah. And then I just need one other option. Wonder if all this mess hits all enemies. Not counting Merilith. Something that actually does a high amount of damage. Oh yeah, we can't use Queen Titania, can we? Dragon Soul does, but it's only going to hit for 11. Modley's hit 2. Do we really not have a good option? Apparently not. Is Merilith like the only thing? Merilith and Dragon Soul. Both horrible options. I might just have to go another Man Accumulator like Egg Thief or something. Or Divinia for the Cleanse. I don't think we're really going to need Cleanse though. Do I need to purple to blue? That would technically be helpful. They're kind of mana blocked initially. Do I have every mythic? Yes, we have every troop in the entire game. We have every troop and weapon. Not a single one do we not have. Actually, we could check right over here. But every single one. All 987 troops. Also, we're getting really close to the 1,000 milestone. And all 401 weapons. Uh, I have no clue what two pets we're missing because we have literally all of them. Team slots were missing because I'm not a millionaire. <laughs> and 64 banners. I think it costs um, about $9,000 to have every team slot. Which is something we will never have. <laughs> I can guarantee you that. This game could survive another 15 years. And I'm pretty sure we will not have spent even remotely close to $9,000. <laughs> I would sure hope not. I think we're up to like 500 or 600 or 700 over, um, over six years. Which isn't too bad. 
It's about a hundred a year or whatever we spent so far. Uh, I guess I just put a larger slaughter here. I really don't know. <laughs> just a thing. Because I'm just looking to quick kill here. Oh, this banner actually works then. All right, let's roll with that then. I currently have Titan. I probably want Frost Mage for these earlier battles. Because we don't need to survive, we just need to kill. All right, what a weird team for this event, but uh, for these very early battles, you should be fine. Uh, oh wait, oh no, because I'm not using the medals, it's gonna tell me every single time to go use the medals. If I use one medal, will it stop telling me to do so? Yes, okay, good. <laughs> There we go. We'll run a mix of magic and skull, I guess. Because as long as I set at least one, it won't keep telling me to go set more. Which will waste so much time, given how quickly these things will die anyways. Are you counting campaign costs? Ah, uh, yes, that is counting campaign costs. Be a campaign over the course of 10 years? That's still nowhere near $9,000. <laughs> like, not even remotely close. But I needed to go do the math on that at some point. But I'm pretty sure we, we've done about 700 at this point or so. The main thing speeding it up being the um, season pass, of course. And they did increase the value of getting the bigger one quite substantially in the most recent uh, patch. Patch before this patch. Did you really just link a Thropy as you were in death range? Wonderful. So how are you still not dead? If anyone else has any other questions, anything you want me to go over, let me know. Make sure to do so. If you guys haven't used the code yet, it's right over there. Should still be good for a few more minutes. Maybe even longer if people don't devour it. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's getting devoured like it always does. Very quickly. <laughs> Isabel. <laughs> yeah, I do greatly appreciate you uh, donating the season passes. If I'm not mistaken, you've donated literally every season pass we have ever done for the channel. And it is greatly, greatly appreciated. As it definitely helps out a lot. And then we get to show everything a week early as well. Oh, I'll throw that down. And dead. Uh, apparently it's going to force us to have to do the Strizix now. Just try and avoid them. <laughs> You're very impatient. Well, we'll be able to go over to New Mythic a week early. Hopefully the boss troops come out a week early as well. Which, if that is the case, that means next patch actually has to be next Tuesday. Because if they're releasing it the um, Monday after, on the ninth week, that means um, next patch would have to be next Tuesday. Uh, 
because I don't think the boss or boss troops are updated yet in the files. And they would have to be before they get released. Unless they're waiting all the way till the final week. They've been pretty inconsistent with it. The very first season they did the final week, one of the other ones when they did the boss troop, it was the week prior. Um, which one was it? Or it wasn't a boss troop, it was some kind of other feature. But he did it like the week before the final week. Which kind of threw off the whole like, oh, it's going to be on final week kind of thing. But yeah, it's kind of uncertain. But it's either the second to last week or the final week. When they'll allow us to get the boss troop. It would make sense they would do it a week earlier. To have more incentive for the bigger pass people. Though it would be fairer if they did it at the same time. <laughs> But fairer doesn't make them more money. So we'll see which one they do. Also, I should probably start using a skull spam team soon. But I think we might save that for tomorrow. For our real teams. We'll do one last battle. Against a nice easy Strigic. Then we'll do a lot of Ward Lore event tomorrow. Anyways, guys, any other questions? Otherwise, tomorrow, uh, same time as always, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, one hour prior to now tomorrow, we will be doing... Um, hey, we hit the Garudas. But uh, tomorrow we'll be doing the uh, pet. It's just a pretty standard uh, monster pet. It's been out for quite some time, though it's somewhat, somewhat newer. I think it was like a year and a half, two years ago. So uh, some people still might not have it max. So if you haven't yet, definitely make sure to get copies of it or convert it into food. <laughs> and aside from that, we'll probably just mostly be messing with the uh, world event. Uh, we already got confirmation that the patch isn't happening this week, though it is very likely to be happening in the next two weeks, that's for sure. Either next Tuesday or the following Tuesday. So uh, we have that to look forward to very soon. And also, unlike many patches, uh, this is a patch that you can interact with immediately. Uh, every feature that is coming next patch, for the most part, unless they had like achievement for next season, which they might be. Um, but every other feature is um, usable immediately. So uh, that'll be pretty interesting to see how that ends up panning out. Because as soon as the uh, Noma Palooza update um, hits, you can, if you get really lucky, within like an hour, get all four scrolls and then start doing it. Uh, though the chance you actually get all of them in that quick of a time is very exceedingly unlikely. Uh, realistically, I think it might take 10 hours of grinding. Maybe even more. We'll have to see. But uh, we'll try for it. Um, the very first one I'll try to do on stream before the trip, hopefully. However, every subsequent one uh, I will be saving for Noma events. Uh, mostly because they will have better value during gnome events because even though they give you gnomes every single battle they do not increase your chance of getting vault keys but a vault event would so saving them for vault events makes a lot of sense they'll probably still try to run, run one before vault events just to see uh how much loot ends up giving it to us and then we can check the recording after the fact and uh, calculate up the exact amount of resources we accumulated obviously we wouldn't want to do that as we're doing it because that would waste the 15 minute timer <laughs> which we would not want to waste a single second while we are doing it. It better not lag. <laughs> I wonder how they're going to handle that. Like, what happens if someone, like, loses connection during that 15 minutes or something? Like, would they reimburse it or something? Probably not. <laughs> because that would hurt. Like, go five minutes in and it's like, oh, you lost connection. <laughs> uh, what drop rate are you uh, dreaming about? What do you mean? For the gnomes? Uh, we don't know their exact drop rate. We know, like, approximately, like, how annoying it's going to be to get them all. But uh, we don't really have any definitive data on the exact drop rate. Hopefully someone will data mine it initially. Because I'm actually curious about the actual gnome chances. Because whenever you find a gnome, they have a 100% chance of dropping their ballad. The problem is, uh, specifically finding a gnome is a lower rate than a normal gnome. Quite substantially lower. How much lower, we don't know. But it's noticeably, like, 5 times, 10 times rarer than a normal gnome. Maybe even 20, 30, 50 times rarer. Like, it is substantially rarer than a normal gnome, the four of them, that give the ballads. But that's mostly because they don't want people, like, infinitely, infiniting the vet ballads over and over again. Yeah, I know, that's what I was referring to. So if it disconnects, that would be a problem. Because if you lose connection, the timer keeps going. Which would be very problematic. Because if you go for like 5 minutes and then disconnect from the other 10 minutes, you just lost so much loot. So I'm not sure how they're going to handle disconnects or anything. Well, if nothing else, if we do it on stream, we have proof, so... <laughs> Maybe they can reimburse us a Nomapalooza. Or, you know, the four scrolls so you can trigger it at some other time. 
Because that seems like how they'll probably handle the reimbursements. If someone has like a really serious, like, hey, I completely disconnected during this. Could I get like the four things back? I feel like they would say yes. Especially if you could have proof like, hey, here's a disconnect screen while the Nomapalooza is active. Well, we'll have to see. Anyways, guys, I'll catch you guys later. Thanks for stopping by. Hope you all have a wonderful week, and I will catch you guys soon. Bye, everyone.